Five years ago, AI was this technology that everybody was fascinated about and it showed a great potential to, be, to one day to be able to do anything. Uh, but recently, uh, it is becoming more and more common in everyday uh, practice especially in medicine, in particular with the advancements of uh, large language models, the LLMs. Uh, for example, uh, you may have heard of this ChatGPT by OpenAI. However, uh, there is a major issue or let's say major concern in, in medicine and generally the healthcare professionals that let's say a clinician has an idea and wants to develop something using their data or they want to actually use the established AI tools which are not accessible to them, what should they do? They should actually contact or communicate with an AI expert or to be an AI expert themselves, which is typically not possible for them because they don't have time and it requires them years of uh, training to become an AI expert. Therefore, in this study, uh, we aimed uh, to uh, address this issue. And uh, we considered four different uh, specialties in medicine, including gastroenterology, endocrine oncology, otolaryngology, and uh, cardiology. And to be more transparent and make our study more producible, we sourced our data from clinical trials, which were already published in prestigious uh, scientific journals. And we basically tried to reproduce the results of their studies and by results I mean the results of their machine learning predictive models using the LLMs and in particular in our case GPT-4 advanced data analysis. The results are special because the results of the models uh, developed by uh, ChatGPT uh, were either on par or even slightly better than the results of the models developed by original studies and the difference is uh, those models were developed by human AI uh, experts. However, here on this side, these models were only uh, developed by an LLM and it was not guided to, do any uh, to give them any machine learning or statistical knowledge. And it was like, hey, ChatGPT, I have this data set, let's say 10,000 patients, please predict metastasis for me. And it just gave the results and even generated the codes for interested users to dig in more. I think uh, a lot of a lot of things uh, because in this study we did not only introduce uh, a technology or, or we did not only apply it on a specific subspecialty of medicine or, 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 or we did not some, uh, just introduce any algorithm we tried to uh, the, uh, optimize this development process of AI and it can uh, for, for medicine and it can be applied to any any actually use case and it can facilitate the, the uh, advancement of medicine, especially the computational medicine, by equipping the, even the non-experts uh, of healthcare professionals or even actually the experts by uh, unburdening them from time-consuming steps. Yes, actually there is already a follow-up. We have been focusing this time on radiology to extend the study uh, in order to basically uh, equip the radiologists with an automated tool that can facilitate their daily practice and or even, even uh, from an academic point of view, their research. Of course, it has a lot of potential because it's not just uh, focused on one specialty or it, it can be applied to any, any specialty in medicine. Of course, uh, our study has limitations. First of all, uh, so our study was uh, limited to tabular data and in future we can extend this in a way that it can actually use other data types, for example, images like, like MRI or CT. And uh, one other limitation that I think our study has and it can be improved is that we tested this framework only on GPT-4 uh, from OpenAI, which is not an open source model. Future studies can actually extend this to using uh, open source models, for example, the newly, the newly released LAMA3 model from uh, Meta. Uh, 
I appreciate my funding from Radiological Cooperative Network, abbreviated as Raccoon, uh, from uh, German Federal Ministry of Education and Research, and also Daniel Thun and Sven Nibelung uh, appreciate their funding from DFG. And Daniel Thun further appreciates uh, grants from uh, BNBF and also the Odelia Framework of European Union.